another edition of Middleware Friday for February 10th, 2017. This is episode 6, and I'm here to talk today about Azure Logic Apps and Power BI real-time data set. Jumping right in, we're going to talk about Power BI as part of our feature content. Part of the reason for this is in the last Logic Apps Live, if you're watching, Jeff and the team announced that the Power BI connector that included the real-time data set functionality is now generally available. It was something that I had taken a look at earlier in a private preview, was uh, really looking forward to talking about it. Now that it's public, we're gonna go ahead and dive deep into it. In the community corner, we're gonna highlight my good friend Sandro's Microsoft Integration Stencil Pack. So if you're doing any sort of architecture diagrams, that are focused around the Microsoft integration ecosystem. You should be using these, if not, shame on you. But Sandro's done a tremendous job of putting these together. He's always graciously taken my requests and included the different icons that I've been looking for. So thanks a lot, Sandro. Just think it's worth highlighting all of this great work that he's done. Also, our friends at Quick Learn have released a webcast on what's new in BizTalk Server 2016. So I figured that was something worth highlighting. I know some of the people on my team had watched this and were really happy with it. So I figured it was worthwhile sharing with the rest of the audience. And lastly, we'll touch again on the Global Integration Bootcamp. A lot of the registrations are open. I just wanted to highlight that in case you weren't aware you can now go up and sign up for many of these different events. On to the feature content. So as I mentioned before, we're gonna be talking about Power BI and the real-time streaming API. This goes back to a blog post, the links provided here, which was pub published on August 10th, 2016. And it talks about introducing the Power BI REST API, which allows for the exploration of streaming real-time data into Power BI. Now, some of the use cases you may want to use this feature is in scenarios where you have streaming or IoT device telemetry types of types of data. Really how it works under the hood is that there's a REST API endpoints where HTTP POST requests are made and your dashboard will update automatically. With Azure Logic Apps and the new Power BI connector, we're able to take advantage of this streaming API and take data from directly within our Logic App and publish to a Power BI dashboard. If you recall in episode three, we talked about Logic Apps and Cognitive Services. The use case was an electronic store where we had different customers looking at different goods. We wanted to take pictures using the security camera and actually route that information through Logic Apps and Cognitive Services in order to determine the demographics of our customers with the intent that we would be able to drive different marketing campaigns based upon the types of people that were actually in our store. As part of that solution, we talked about storing our demographic data inside of Azure SQL and then building an analytics solution on top of it. We no longer need to do that because we do have Power BI where we can create these analytical dashboards right off of the data coming from Azure Logic Apps. And here we have the, the new architecture represented by our Power BI icon, once again, provided by our good friend, Sandro. With that background information out of the way, let's now dive right into the demo. I've preloaded some data, routed it through Azure Logic Apps, Cognitive Services, and then stored the output inside of Power BI. So here's the Power BI dashboard that I've created. Now we've got uh, both genders, male and female. And we can go ahead and click on each gender and actually get the average age for the pictures that were submitted. So here's some of the faces that uh, I've included uh, where we have females that were processed and we can see their average age. Similarly, we can take a look at the males that were passed through the solution as well. And we can see the average age for, for them. We can also take a closer look at different attributes that exist for these different genders. So we can go ahead and select both genders and we can see the number of males. There was 10 passed in versus four. If we go ahead and take a look at sunglasses, we can see the total number of 
sunglasses, reading glasses, and no glasses that existed in the actual picture. So let's go ahead and deselect female and we can see that we've got six, two, and two. In total, we've got 10. Now, if you recall from episode three, Cognitive Services is able to determine whether or not people have a beard. And that gets ranked on a scale from 0 0.00 to one, with zero being no or a very little beard and one being full beard. Now, when we go through the different pictures, we can see there is some varying degrees here. We do have a picture that is 0 0.8. If we head back, you know, perhaps it's Randy Moss that would be showing up with the beard. I suspect it actually is. And then point three is perhaps could be Gary Vaynerchuk as well. We can also go and take a look at mustaches and see, you know, similarly on a scale from zero to one, how many people in the pictures had mustaches. Let's just check the females. We can see, okay, no glasses, no mustaches and no beards. Yeah, I would say that that's true. Let's go ahead and run a new image through just to make sure that this is all working. So I've got local images and then here we've got OneDrive and that's where the images are getting picked up from. Let's go ahead and take Nikhil Hawkinson's favorite soccer player, Pepe, and let's process him. So when we see that it's green, then we'll know essentially that it's it's ready, it's picked up. We can go to our Logic app. Let's go ahead and enable it. Let's go ahead and run the trigger. It's now running. And it's now complete. So let's head back to our dashboard. We will click on males and we should see a new entry. And now we see that we have 11 males. Just for good measure, let's go ahead and run a female through. In this case, it's Beyonce. Let's go ahead and run our logic app again. We see that it's now completed. Let's head back to our report, do a refresh. Now we see we've gone from four to five. So just for good measure, let's just now process the rest of these folks. We've got Pete Carroll, the coach of the Seattle Seahawks. We'll wait, okay, they're all green it looks like. Let's just go ahead and run our logic app again. Oh, we have a failure. Disregard that particular um, instance. The rest of them have succeeded. Let's go ahead back and refresh. And sure enough, we can see that we're now at 16 and we're at seven females. And all of our other widgets have updated accordingly we can now see a bit of a spike in terms of what the average age is for a male now because we did load those all in a very short duration obviously our line looks straight up it would have been otherwise flatter if we would have staggered them um, over a period of several minutes let's now drill into the actual solution so this is the solution as it was in episode three. As you can see, we have a SQL connector here and we've got that embedded within a for each. For each face that is detected within an image, now all of the images that we've been processing have had a single face, but regardless, there is a collection returned from the detect faces API. We go ahead and create a record for each face and we are populating the appropriate columns with all of these different attributes. Here's what it looks like in the episode six solution. So within our for each loop, 
we have the ability to add a new connector, which in this case is going to be Power BI. And we are going to add rows to a data set. So still in preview, but it is generally available where we can actually go ahead and invoke this connector. Now, of course, with Power BI, we need to log in. So I go ahead and log in and provide my credentials. Once I've done that, I now need to provide a workspace, a data set and table, all pretty standard Power BI constructs. Now with workspaces, if you're on the free plan, you typically just have your personal workspace. You get into the Power BI Pro, that's where you can create additional workspaces that also then link to Office 365 groups if you wish. Next, you can create essentially a container or a data set to house this data, and then more specifically, a table. That's the configuration inside of Logic Apps for now. We really do need to create our back end data structure in order for us to populate that connector with the appropriate metadata. So if I log into Power BI, and in this case, I have my workspace called Middleware Power BI, I can go ahead and create a streaming data set. And I can do so by clicking on streaming data sets underneath data sets. And then I want to go ahead and click the plus sign. From there, I have two options. I can choose API or PubNub. Now, certainly in the context of this demo, we're not interested in PubNub, so we're going to cr create or select the streaming API data set. Now, within the next menu, we have the ability to define our schema, our Power BI table schema. So I've gone ahead and saved some time by pre-populating all of the different attributes coming back from the face API, including the face ID, gender, age, mustache, beard, sideburns, glasses, and picture date. So that's something I've added myself just so that we can actually create a trend if we're interested in the different average age over a period of time. What will happen as we're filling out these different fields, we do get a sense of the shape of the message that needs to be passed into the API. Since we're using Logic Apps, we don't have to be too concerned with it, but if we were going to be calling this, you know, through a postman or something like that, we would need to be concerned with it. Once we're done, we go ahead and create, click on Create. And now we have our streaming data API created. We can now click on the Create Report button where we can then go ahead and define our report. Now we're back into the solution for episode six. So here I'm in the Logic App itself. And as you can see, I've included my workspace, data set, and table. And once I go ahead and do that, I now have all of the other fields that were established when I created my real-time data set. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to populate them with the output from my cognitive service API call. In addition, I can add a picture date or a last modified date, which represents the timestamp coming from our upload to blob storage that was part of the solution described in episode three. Jumping into our community content for this week, I wanted to highlight the latest release of Microsoft Integration Stencil Pack from Sandro. This is version 2.4. We've got a link to his blog post where he discusses it. But I just wanted to call out all of the hard work that he's been doing in this space. I've benefited from it greatly. Uh, here's the actual, some of the icons that are actually available as part of his integration pack. He actually, as part of his download, has several different stencils that includes Microsoft and non-Microsoft icons that have been just very helpful for me whenever I'm creating architecture diagrams or using them in my presentation. I've benefited greatly from them. And 
Sandro being the good guy that he is, is always obliged when I've asked for new icons, whether that's being related to data virtualization, Denodo, and even more recently, the cognitive services icon that he's provided. Kudos to you, Sandro. If you're not using them, you should be. Go ahead and check them out at this link. Next up, I wanna talk about some more community content. This time it's by QuickLearn. And what they've recently done is recorded a webcast about the new features in BizTalk Server 2016. You can see the webcast at the following link. And here's a nice diagram that illustrates some of the changes that are included in 2016. So you'll see that in purple. And you can also see the progression that the Microsoft team has made over the past several releases in terms of the value that they're adding. Now, there is a lot of content to go through for 2016. So for, the, for this particular webcast, QuickLearns decided to focus on the following different topics, including SaaS support for relay adapters, comparing the XL, XSL transform to XSL compile transform, and also enhancements to the BizTalk management experience. And lastly, I called this out a few episodes ago, but I wanted to call it out again. And this is the Global Integration Bootcamp. It's a community-driven event held worldwide, all on the same day, March 26th, I believe. And what you can do is go ahead and sign up for the session that's closest to you. So if you're interested, click on the link, check it out, and sign up. It looks like I will be participating in the United States edition, which is in New York. I'll be focusing on API management and protecting logic apps. So this was a topic that I gave at the Charlotte Bootcamp back in September. So I'm looking forward to delivering an updated session based upon some of the new investments made to Azure API management, which we talked about in episode one. That concludes our episode six for Middleware Friday. As always, feel free to provide feedback through one of these different channels. Happy to take that on. Thanks again, BizTalk360, for being a great partner of the show. And if you have any BizTalk360 or Service Bus 360 needs, uh, feel free to reach out to them. I know they just changed their licensing model on service bus monitoring that may be worth checking out go ahead and visit biztalk360.com for more info credits as for credits i'll leave you with the link to the music so thanks again for watching middleware friday and we'll see you next week mm -hmm.